Hello everybody, I'm Victor Mazzari. Thank you for watching this video. This video is about unglaciated areas. It's about rocks and minerals from unglaciated areas. In particular, Wisconsin. Well, I know what you're thinking. The state of Wisconsin has been covered by the glacier just like all the other northern states. However, if you're familiar with geological maps, you would know that there's a certain central section not too far from the Dells that has not been covered by glaciers and does not just have plain old bedrock. Well, in this case, no better place to find that is here in Devil's Lake in Wisconsin, but not too far from Wisconsin Dells by Baraboo. And I'm here at the beautiful Devil's Lake, and what I have here is this Baraboo Quartzite. This is what we have here, folks. It's purplish quartzite that, like, say, a billion years ago began to form, and it formed when sand and sediment was deposited into a shallow sea and then it, uh, under heavy pressure and heat, began to form into quartzite. It formed into quartzite when that happened over, over millions and millions of years. And what I have here today, folks, is some samples of that quartzite, much of which is used as railroad ballast, such as this one. But in this one, you know, some of them are, I like this one right here, it's rounded and tumbled. And by the way, folks, none of these are polished or cut or anything like that, these are found in their dry state, they're natural. And why do I like natural rocks? Well, I'll tell you why. For the simple reason that if we were all still living as cavemen and we didn't have all the luxuries that we have today in our modern day and time, we would look at these rocks and we would say, wow, they're pretty beautiful treasures Had we, you know, when we discover them. You know, because, and you know, I, could, I know what you're thinking also. I could go into any gem store and find a lot more better, beautiful, polished rocks and probably all, every type of gem you can think of that, that's found around the world. But I like to, but again, folks, I, I want to I change our perspective. I want us to appreciate what we would just find right, in our, right, right within our reach. And what we can find is, uh, you know, the stuff like this. This is a white quartzite. And, and depending upon the impurities of quartz, it can, it can range from pure white to yellow to purple. Now, like this one, I'll probably get in the shade here for you to see what it looks like. It's kind of neat. This one, if you can believe it, is almost a basaltic like rock, but yet it is metamorphic, and it, which also means that it, and it was found here in central Wisconsin, the part where there has been no glacial contact. So that suggests to us that it is native to the area, and it being that it's purplish, it is part of the outcrop. And another interesting thing about it is it's almost basalt-like, and it's very uh, medium-grained, kind of like sandstone almost. And yes, there is sandstone that can be found here, like this one, and it has sort of a white quartz vein that runs through it. And this one, which is pretty neat, which is... Uh, proof that there was heat and heavy pressure that formed this stuff. This is a conglomerate or a pudding stone. It has pieces of the purplish uh, baraboo quartzite in it compacted together with limestone. And you probably can't see it with this in this video but there are little other little pebbles that are embedded in this stone along with this big one. And this one, if you can see it, is a conglomerate. It is an assortment of little tiny quartz pebbles compacted together to make a rock that looks like a, looks like little little dots in it. Here's another piece of that purplish quartzite. The pretty common version. It's uh, it's got white quartzite in it and it's got purple. I prefer the rounded and tumbled kind though. This is a piece, this is the rare piece of purplish quartzite. And this rock right here is granite, which could have also formed here in Wisconsin. Granite formed in, natively to Wisconsin, that's not from, that did not come in from Canada, is pretty rare. And to tell that, this is a kind of a pinkish. With it being pink a little bit, it kind of means that it comes from this purplish quartzite outcrop. Then here's some red granite my favorite. And also we have basalt with quartz veins. 
that's kind of neat this, even though it's common and it's usually from the Canadian Shield this one could have been formed here in Wisconsin and I like it because it's you can't see it in this video but it, it's it sparkles a lot which kind of and it has these little white streaks here which kind of looks like the snowy weather that they get up here along with the crystallization which kind of resembles frost true piece of Wisconsin and this here is a sandstone with little holes and pores in it and it's very uh, medium grained and sometimes you can see through these little holes and pores this sandstone com alongside with the uh, usual bedrock found in unglaciated areas is, uh, is a native material and this right here is vesicular basalt it's called vesicular because it still has its little holes and pores in it but in some cases if those holes and pores get filled with uh, calcite brought in by groundwater it would form rhyolite pulpery which is the, vol the volcanic equivalent of granite along with this, the same thing with this one here this is a basalt amygdaloidal and actually I think I was wrong this is this was just probably this is the way it, it, it always looked this rhyolite rhyolite has, uh, was always uh, it always had these little crystals in it it's the basalt amygdaloidal that had its holes filled in with calcite in this case had little it has little mini geodes in it which makes it kind of it forms a lot of little different looks like little eyes can't you can't really see it in this video but these are little geodes that are in this rock so there you have it folks this is a pretty neat collection if you think about it and the way you can think about it again is that had we lived in a more primitive day we would appreciate these rocks more and this is why which is exactly why I do these videos so again I'm Victor Mazzari thank you for watching